build your own document control for an ISO 9001 QMS? Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can build out the core features, including things like version control, so you can track both major and minor versions, as well as having a full audit history, basically a trail of who's done what and when. Also having tagging abilities so you can quickly navigate and find documents very quickly. I'm also going to be discussing some optional extras that you could add for things like automated review reminders, things like approval processes to track who has approved documents when. My name is Dougie Wood. I'm a Microsoft MVP and I've been helping companies build out document management systems for the past 15 years. So let's dive in and take a look at how you can build your own document control. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is create our SharePoint site. Now, technically you could build a document control on either a team site or a communication site, but in my experience, it's usually best to do as a communication site, mostly because, well, for two reasons, you can have a better kind of look and feel, I, I think, with a communication site. And also communication sites are usually used as a kind of, um, an area that all the organization can access. So we're gonna give it a site name. Now this could be document control, control documents, whatever you want to call it. But I'd also recommend giving it a site description so that you know what this site is. And if you're looking through the admin center later, you know exactly the purpose of why you have this SharePoint site, which is to be a document control, potentially for your QMS, uh, for an ISO 9001 related system, um, whatever it may be give it a bit of a description just so it's obvious to people afterwards what it is. Now, I am gonna create a completely separate video which is going to walk through how to create a better looking homepage for this document control. But in this video, I'm gonna focus on purely just creating the document library components. So if I click on documents across the top, this takes us into the default document library. Now I'm gonna start adding some columns first, which will be my metadata for my document library. So the first column I'm gonna add is called owner. And this is just a people field that I can tag people against. Next, I'm going to add in an approver column. So this is the person who's going to be approving our documents. The owner is going to be more like a reviewer. In fact, sometimes certain clients I work with prefer to actually call that reviewer rather than owner. Um, it's totally up to you. It's a preference. Um, <clears throat> we're then going to tag a review date, so when the document needs to be reviewed, and also what, what frequency of review. Now, this is always set in months. Um, so it might be 12 months, 24 months, uh, 36 months. We can set defaults as well. So if most of the documents are going to be 12 months, it just means we don't have to manually tag it every time we upload a document. Um, we can add, within reason, as many columns as we like, but there's certain ones that we definitely will want to use. So things like a document type to be able to filter later. So this really helps with the kind of user navigation to find things like policies, SOPs, work instructions, manuals, training materials, now, you can also color code these options. You don't have to, um, but sometimes it just helps it visually stand out. Again, most of the documents in here will probably be policy, so I'm just gonna set the default to be policy. Now, I'm gonna create a document just so you can see what this then looks like within the system. Just by clicking on new and then word document, it creates me a new document. I'm just gonna put in some dummy text into here. I'm also gonna change the name of the document. I'm gonna call this, for example, my quality policy. Now by refreshing the page, you can then see it's added my document, but it's also um, it's also added some default uh, values, like the frequency is 12 months, because I set that as the default. The document type is policies, because I set that as the default. We can always change these, by the way. And it's also, because I made the owner and the approver field required, it's also asking me um, to populate that. Now you can also see that when I'm building out a system like this, I like to have plenty of test documents. So what I'm doing here is I'm just duplicating using the copy feature in SharePoint, just like copy and paste to basically copy that, that document I had before. And then what I do is I go through, change the names to something that sounds realistic. And I start populating all the data, like the owner field, the approver field, the review dates, just so again, the system looks a little bit more obvious. Now you, you can do this on a sort of individual basis per document, or you can see I'm in a quick edit grid view. And just like in Excel, you can actually drag uh, down, uh, selecting one file and dragging all, all of them to, to populate all the data like so. If you're interested in this system, then we do deploy it at a fixed price to our customers. Get in touch for a free demo using the link in the description below. Our approver 
uh, owner and review dates and frequencies are important. So when we come to build our workflows later, um, it's actually something uh, that the system would automatically need to know who is going to be contacted to come and review the document, who's going to approve the document. Um, we also will track things like when it was last reviewed, um, and we need the frequency to know when the next review cycle would kick off. So I would then just go through and populate all of these documents with some real sounding names. So now we're tagging documents as policies, but we're also tagging them as SOPs. You can see that's the interface if we were to do it on an individual basis, rather than as a, as a grid view, we can just select and just do it individually and see all the kind of properties per document as well. So I'm just populating that data now. So I've got plenty of data for things which look like manuals, thing documents that look like policies and SOPs. So this now means I can use those filters to test to make sure that if, say, for example, someone was looking for manuals, they can go in and they can um, they can filter document type by manual. Um, I can save that view. So if I say, for example, call that manuals, it means I can then transition between all documents and manuals uh, as a kind of view in my document library. Um, the next thing um, that I'm going to be looking at doing is enabling the version settings. Now, actually, this is in the version settings tab. I accidentally clicked the wrong tab here. Now, because I want all of my documents to go through an approval uh, system, I'm going to enable the content approval for submitted items to yes. I also want to track both major and minor versions. So you might just want major versions like one, two, three, four, but I want to track the minor versions as well, the drafts. And that's what most people want to do. So at that 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and only at the point of approval would it then increment to the whole major version. I can specify the version time limit. So what kind of version time limit do you want to get? So no time limit, automatic, manual. I can also keep the following number of major versions. So in this case, 50. We could also specify who should see draft items. So most people uh, with their systems, they only want it so that basically end users can only ever see major published versions. Then I'm coming into my view here and I'm setting, um, basically I want my approval status to be earlier in the view. So these columns uh, here, these numbers are basically telling me where in the view my columns are going to appear. So you now see I've changed now. So the approval status is the third uh, or fourth column along. I also want the version number. So I'm adding this now to the view. And now I've got my version number. I'm just going to move these around a little bit just so it sits right on the page. So now I've got my document, uh, my version number, my approval status, and I can choose to save that view so everyone can see that. I can also group by things like grouping by document types. So I can group by my document manual um, and policies and SOPs. So it makes it much easier then to find those documents as well. Um, it, it's something as well that once once you click into a document, it'll open obviously open up that that full document. And I'm just showing you what this looks like now. When I'm making a change to the document, um, it will automatically save it. But you can see now it increments that minor version, and it's also put it back into draft mode. Submitting it for approval is really easy. You can just go to publish, and it sets it to pending, which automatically means it's it's been sent for. Um, approval and we're going to choose to approve and reject it directly from in SharePoint which again increases the major version to whole version and it's also got a full audit history of who has changed what and when um, and you can even go back and see previous versions or restore from a previous point in time. Final things is I probably would want to do is changing things at the logos and I'll show you that in the next video. I can also go back to the home page and now I've got my view. I can automatically change the, the buttons in here to say this is maybe my manuals view. Paste in the link to that manuals view. And then when I click on republish, it then means I can jump directly to not all documents, but directly to a filtered view. In this case, it's manuals. If you enjoyed that video, then check out the next video on screen where we're going to dive in further into our QMS in SharePoint where we're going to be looking at building out a training and competency management system. I'll see you there.